What's up, Fetchers of America? All right, we're going to start today. We're going to talk about the number one tool in the solve realm of algebra problems. That tool is what we call the balance rule. The balance rule. Now, many of you are familiar with this rule. It's not just a mathematical rule. It's a scientific rule. And it basically says that everything we do, and really anything we do, to one side of an equal sign, we must do. And you can probably finish the sentence on your own there at home. What are you going to say? That's right. We must do the exact same to the other side. Okay? I sometimes, when we do this rule, I like to draw a scale and, uh, you know, throw, like this is a five pound weight and this is a five pound weight. I know they don't look exactly the same, but they are. They weigh the same. And, and so this is balanced. And so if I hurry and I throw a little, you know, two pounder right here, what's going to happen, obviously it's going to drop down, but if I do the same thing to this side and I throw a two pounder here, they're going to balance back out. If I subtract this five pounds, it's going to drop down here. If I subtract that five pounds, it's going to balance out. So it, it basically, whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I got to do the exact same thing to the other. Let's take the number 23. 23 equals 23, right? So if we subtract 2, we're going to get 21. 21 does not equal 23 anymore. We have manipulated math to look different and be different, uh, and that's going to get the problem wrong. So we got to, again, we got to do the exact same thing to the other side of the equal sign. Now 21 equals 21. We've maintained balance. Uh, if I divide this side by 7, uh, I'll get 3. Uh, but 3 does not equal 21, so I've got to divide this by, side by 7. If I multiply this side by 5, I get 15. 15 does not equal 3. But if I multiply this side by 5, I get 15. And on and on we go. The balance rule. Very simple rule. Uh, one that I think you're all very familiar with. So just take a moment and reflect on that. That is how this rule is going to govern everything we do and solve problems and allow us the uh, power to manipulate things and to solve these problems by doing the same thing to both sides of the equal sign. We're going to pause for just a second. All right, I got Master Kenny here. Come on, Kenny. Come around the camera here. Kenny's masked up. Brother Rich is not. Uh, yeah, we won't even talk about that. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm Batman, he's Robin. Maybe he's Batman, I'm Robin. Anyways. All right, Kenny's here as always, running the tech. Okay, so we learned about the balance rule. So now we're going to apply it. So we're going to be talking about the addition principle. I'm just going to tell you right now, that's going to be section 2.1. The multiplication principle, that's going to be section 2.2. And then how to use them together, and that's going to be the section 2.3. Now, we're not going to do all of section 2.3, so don't get ahead of yourselves and do extra credit and go past the numbers we assign. You can do the evens in between the odds that we assign, but don't go past the numbers we assign, because that's going to be a whole different lecture on Monday next week, a really killer lecture. We're going to love it, okay? So, I want you to come here with the addition principle. I'm going to ask everybody. It's going to be example number one. Let's, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, so if I have x plus 3 equals 10, Kenny, what does x equal? 7. 7. Yeah, it's, 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 you guys can do this in your head, you know. Um, but if we think about this, um, we can use algebra. So I want you to come over here and look at these three things. We're going to leave these up here, um, but I want you to maybe take a snapshot of this maybe even with your phone, so that you can use it uh, throughout your homework. We're going to ask ourselves, who is sharing sides with x? Okay, so that's our first question. So we come over here, who is sharing sides with x? That's right, 3 is, okay? The next thing, what are they doing to x? Okay, so what is 3 doing to x? It's being added. Okay, what operation is it doing to x? Add, subtract, multiply, divide are your, are your choices there. So notice that we have this operation. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. And then the third step is we're going to do the opposite operation to both sides. So if we're adding 3, then we're going to subtract 3. And the balance rule says whatever we do to one side, we've got to do the exact same thing to the other. So we'll subtract 3 here. Positive 3 and negative 3 cancel each other out. They make 0. x plus 0 equals x. 10 minus 3 makes 7. So what Kenny could do in his head, we can do with algebra. Well, the beauty of that is that then when we can't do it in our head, and we have a problem like you know x minus, uh, well, let's see, let's say x 
you know, minus 2 equals negative 12. I know Kenny can do this in his head, but he's still thinking a little bit, just a tiny bit, okay? Um, but we can't do this in our head. Now we can use these algebraic skills. So we go back to our list. Let's look here at the far right board, or far right side of the board. Who is sharing sides with x? Okay, so who is sharing sides with x? 2 is, okay? What's it doing to x? Subtracting. What's the opposite of subtraction? Addition. We're going to do that to both sides. So we're going to add to and add to. Okay? And so these cancel, and we just get x is left over. And negative 12 plus 2, do it on a calculator, do it in your head, it's negative 10. And so we come up with that answer. Now, a couple of things I, I want to share with you. Let's come back over here. Okay? So the goal of solving, the goal of solving is to get x alone, all right, is to get the variable alone. Now, when we say x, could we mean y, b, c? You know, yeah, we could mean any variable. x is just kind of our generic term for the variable. By the way, I dressed up for you today. You like this? This tie and all this stuff? It's my day off from teaching, so going cash here. Me and Kenny, come up here, Kenny. Kenny and I are in sweatshirt, hoodie mode. We're, we're cool. <laughs> okay, so... On the addition principle here, I want to share this with you. The addition principle could aptly be named the addition or subtraction principle, but it's not. It's just called the addition principle. Uh, we're going to eventually call this the AP, or short. Um, but notice here, we added, here we subtracted, so it could apply to either addition or subtraction. Now, some of the first questions in your homework tonight, they're going to ask you to check your answers. And we're going to have you check all your answers tonight. Um, you got to trust me on this. Uh, I'm not going to make you do it the rest of the semester if you do it in tonight's homework. And that will be my deal for you. Even if they tell you, and they will tell you in the directions to check your answers, but I'm going to say no, don't do that, except in section 2122 in the portion of 23 we do tonight. How do we check our answers? I'm going to, I'm going to plop that under multiplication principle uh, just so we don't have to erase things. But our solution in example number one, so this is example number two, our solution here was seven, okay? Um, basically, we take the original problem, so we take the original problem, okay, that's the first thing we do, and we have x plus three equals ten. And then we plug the solution that we came up with into the problem, plug the solution in. Okay, and the solution was seven, so where there's an x, we'll put a seven. So now we have 7 plus 3 equals 10. And then we go ahead and we simplify that. Okay? And 7 plus 3 is 10, so 10 equals 10. And here's the deal. If we come up with a true statement, then the answer was correct. If we come up with a false statement, then the answer is incorrect. So let's play a little game here for a second. Let's say I accidentally said that 10 minus 3 was negative 7. Let's just say I did that, okay? And we plug that in here. So we plug that back into this. We have negative 7, you know, plus 3 equals 10. Well, negative 7 plus 3 makes negative 4. That does not equal 10. And so that is not a true answer, okay? It's an incorrect answer. We'd have to go back and we'd have to redo it, okay? That's, that's what we're talking about there. So we can take this one right here, and we go back and we look at the original problem, x minus 2. Okay? x minus 2 equals uh, negative 12. So we took the original problem. We're going to take the solution, negative 10, and plug it in. So we're going to take negative 10, and that is whoop, minus 2 equals negative 12. Negative 10 minus 2 is the same as negative 10 plus negative 2. Same sign, add them. 10 and 2 make 12, all negatives. Indeed, check that is a true statement. So negative 10 was the correct answer. Okay, we're going to pause one more time. All right, my fetchers, welcome back. Me and Kenny are killing it here. We're excited. We're trying to make this super efficient for you so you don't have to spend a ton of time watching a bunch of stuff. So our next principle is the multiplication principle. So if I have 3x equals 15, all right, Kenny, what does x equal? Five. Five. Totally. We can do this in our head. But same principles apply. Far right side of the board here. Who is sharing sides with our variable? X. Three is. Okay. 
What is 3 doing to x? Multiplying, okay? What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So what we do to one side, we gotta do to the other. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna divide this by three, and we're gonna divide this by three. Balance rule says whatever you do to one side, I gotta do the same to the other. What's three divided by three? It's one. What's one times x? It's just x. X is now alone, okay? 15 divided by three is five. So what Kenny could do in his head, we can do with algebra, which is nice because then, again, when we have more complex examples where we can't do it in our head, like maybe x over negative 2 equals negative 12, okay? We can do this. Now, I want to come back here, and I want to remind you. Notice in this original problem, x plus 3 equals 10. See, x was not alone, but then at the end, x was alone. x minus 2 equals negative 12. Now, it's not alone. Here, it is alone, all right? 3x, it's got stuff sharing sides with it, but now it's alone. Come back, in, come back to this. The goal of solving is to get x alone, is to get everything away from x, okay? Everything. Even the negatives, okay? All right. Um, this, again, this is called the multiplication principle, but it also could aptly be named the multiplication or division principle. It is not, um, but both multiplication and division apply to this principle. Um, who is sharing sides with x? Yeah, negative 2 is. What's it doing? It's being divided. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So we're going to multiply uh, this side by negative 2 and this side by negative 2. You can put it in the front or the back here. Uh, the negative and the negative cancel each other out. The 2's cancel each other out. And you've achieved isolation. X is all by itself. And negative times a negative makes a positive 24. So X equals 24. I want to check this answer. I'm not going to check this one. We know 3 times 5 makes 15. We're good. Let's check this answer, though. The original problem was x over negative 2 equals negative 12. So we're going to take positive 24, plug it in for x, so we got 24 over negative 2. Does that equal negative 12? Indeed, you put that in your calculator, check it out. But 24 divided by negative 2 does make negative 12 equals negative 12. Check. I know this math is true. You probably don't know that song, but it's from the 80s. If you don't love 80s music, you're jacked up. Okay? All right. So that covers, listen, we've, we've, that's all of 2, 1, right there, addition principle. This is all of 2, 2, multiplication principle, right? So we're going to pause again for just a minute. We are back. All right. We're going to get crazy, okay? So hard or easy? Yeah, easy. Hard or easy? Yep, easy, all right? So we're going to take these two easy concepts. We're going to marry them together. We're going to get crazy here, mixology. We're going to mix these two together, okay? Uh, so you can see here, if we ask who's sharing sides with x, well, now, in these problems, there's just one thing sharing sides with x. But in this one, there's two things. There's a 3 and a 5 sharing sides with x. Um, so in this instance, when we use the principles together, I, I want you guys, in your homework, and I want you to be religious about this, okay? Because we're going to, this is part of what we call the three-step process to solving. So when we solve, we have three steps. And we are going to leave step number one, dun, 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 a mystery, okay? Because we're not going to need step number one until we speak again on Monday's class. But step number two is the addition principle, okay? And step number three is the multiplication principle. So it's kind of weird, isn't it? We're not learning step number one first. We're learning steps two and three. Uh, this will make more sense to you uh, when we get back together, but we've learned this, we've learned this, but it is critical that you follow the order of doing the addition principle first and the multiplication principle last. If you don't, you're going to create fractions in most instances, almost every instance, but not every single one, but a lot of them. And we all know how we feel about fractions, okay? so. First thing we're going to do when we say who's sharing sides with x is we're going to do the addition principle. So we're saying who's sharing sides with x that's being added or subtracted before we talk about multiplication division. So who is? Five. Kenny says, yep, I got it right. Kenny's my, he's checking my work here. He's got to do that. So five is the, the first thing we got to deal with. Um, it is being added. What's the opposite of addition? Subtraction. So we're going to subtract five. What we do to one side, we got to do to the other. So we're going to subtract five. Uh, the fives cancel out. 
Positive 5 and negative 5 makes 0. So we're left with 3x on this side equals 17 minus 5 is 12. This is the way I like you to show work. Okay, it's very nice to put this in a vertical format like this. Write the problem, apply the principle. Always write the problem. Start in your homework by writing the problem. Don't leave the problem off your paper. That's a surefire way to get the problem wrong. Now who's sharing sides with x? The only thing that's sharing sides is 3. It is being multiplied. The opposite of multiplication indeed is division. So you're going to divide this side by 3. Balance rule, what you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. That's our big tool we started with, the balance rule. Okay? 3 over 3 makes 1. 1 times x leaves x. x is all alone. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Time to check our answer. We have 3x plus 5 equals 17. Okay? Where there's an x, we're going to put in a 4. So we're going to put a 4 right there. We're going to have 3 times 4 plus 5 equals 17. Order of operations problem here, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 5 is 17. Indeed, 17 equals 17. Check. That is true. That's what you're going to do in your homework assignments uh, tonight. Okay, that covers everything. We're going to spend about five minutes, and we're going to give you guys um, some of the problems from the homework that are kind of weird and wacky just to help you out. And so we're going to pause for just a second and write these on the board. All right, we're back, Fetchers. So we're going the extra mile. Usually I don't put this many uh, problems on the board. Uh, we're going to first talk about section 2.1, uh, where we're talking about the addition principle, okay, the AP. And uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five examples up here. Kenny's going to check our work to make sure we're doing them right. I didn't put any easy ones up here. The easy ones, you've got easy ones in there. We went over easy ones in the lecture, you know, just 10 minutes ago. So um, r plus a third equals eight thirds. You know, we got fractions here. We got decimals. Um, you know, we got some negatives and stuff. We're going to talk about all these. Let's first uh, do this problem right here. r plus a third equals eight thirds. Who's sharing sides with x? One third is. What's it doing to x? It's being added. Opposite of addition, subtraction. Subtract one third. Subtract one third. Okay. This cancels. We get r equals. And ultimately, eight minus one is seven thirds. And and that's the answer. To that problem, okay? And you plug it back in, you can check it and, and all that good stuff. Now, um, it's, it's really interesting here uh, because I'm going to uh, divert your attention from this problem over to the far right problem next. Notice this is an improper fraction and this is correct. Let's come back to this problem over here. Who's sharing sides with x? Okay, half is. What's it doing? It's being added, opposite of addition, subtraction. So we're going to subtract a half and subtract a half, okay? Uh, these cancel, of course. X is alone, and we have 7 minus 1 half, okay? Now, just from a common sense standpoint, if you got 7 minus a half, you got 6 and a half. And guess what, Fetchers? That's the answer in the back of the book. Um, normally, we would multiply 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1 and call this uh, 13 halves, okay? But they're not going to do that. They're going to leave this as six and a half. It's, this is one of the reasons I don't love math books sometimes. Is um, it's kind of annoying. We've got this inconsistency where we like uh, improper fractions in algebra, uh, but then and they use it here, but then they they don't do it here. And you're going to see this in the homework. Okay, so just don't be alarmed. Uh, but you know what? We're flexible. That's part of what we learn math for is to to grow in our mindset of being, hey, we can do things different ways and come up with the same answer. Um, if, they're, if, if you're working the real world, and you're talking about um, cups of sugar or gallons or something like that, we're going to talk about them in, in fraction form. We're going to talk about them as six and a half as a mixed number. We're not going to say 13 halves gallons. We're going to say six and a half gallons. So this, this can be very useful. Uh, let's look at this problem right here. Negative 7.8 equals 2.8 plus x. Um, actually, I'm changing my mind. Let's, go, let's finish the fraction problems. Let's do this. So this one here was easy because they already had a common denominator. Uh, this was pretty easy because you just subtracted a half from 7. But this one here, who's sharing sides with y? 3 fourths is. What's it doing? It's being subtracted. Opposite of subtraction is addition. So we're going to add 3 fourths and add 3 fourths. These obviously cancel each other out. y is alone. Now we need to take... 5 6 plus 3 fourths. We need to find their LCD. Okay? Um, you can do this. You can prime factorize 6, prime factorize 4, but you could also do it in your head. The LCD here is 12. Is that right, Kenny? Yep. Cool. And we're going to take 5 6 and we're going to multiply it by something to get uh, a denominator of 12. 
This is a skill we learned in the R chapter, and it was on your test. It's even on your test if you haven't taken now, the uh, chapter one test, um, where we manipulate things to uh, change to become this denominator, but they still are the same. Six times what makes 12? Two. We have to put two on top, multiply by the big one. Five times two is 10. So five six is the same as 10 twelfths. Uh, we need 3 fourths to equal something over 12. So 4 times what makes 12? 3. What goes on top? 3. You make that a big 1. 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 fourths is the same as 9 twelfths. We're adding them. So 10 plus 9 is 19. So this ends up being 19 over. We don't add the 12s and make 24. We just carry that in there, 12. Uh, and we don't have to convert that. We're going to leave that as 19 twelfths. Okay? So whatever it, uh, it, it starts at is where it's going to finish at. Uh, this is a good problem uh, in your homework, okay? Okay, um, I'm going to erase this one just to create a little space for these two. Nice thing about video is you can pause and go back and look at it if you need to. All right, so this one right here, negative 7.8 equals 2.8 plus x. doesn't matter that the x is on the other side of the equal sign. The goal is to get x alone. Who's sharing sides with x? 2.8 is. What's it doing? It's being added. Okay, so you're going to subtract. You're going to subtract 2.8, and what you do to one side, balance rule, you got to subtract to the other side. You put this in a calculator, okay? You're going to get 10.6, negative 10.6. Is that right, Kenny? Yep. Yep, and these cancel. You get X, it's alone, we're all done. I'm not checking your answers in these samples. That's your job, okay? You guys, you guys can do that at home, okay? Just showing you some of the weird stuff that comes up. Now, this one right here, sometimes this problem confuses people a little bit. When we do it, though, it'll make sense. They look at a problem like this, and they're like, okay, who's sharing sides with X or Y? X, Y, it's Y in this instance. Um, negative 7 is. What's it doing? It's being added. And so people are like, oh, well, I'll subtract it. Okay, you can do that, but you have to understand you have to subtract a negative 7, right? Okay, which is the same as what? Adding 7. Okay, so this is the part. So subtract negative 7, okay? So I want you to see negative 7 plus y equals 13. What if I just look at this and say, hey, how do I get rid of that 7? Well, I add it. Negative 7 positive 7 makes 0. That makes y alone. But what I do to one side, balance rule, i got to do the other side. So this becomes y equals 20. All right? OK, so the part where it confuses people is that they're like, well, how are you adding if that's not the opposite? Well, you get it now. The opposite of addition is subtraction. And we're subtracting a negative 7. And so minus and negative makes plus. OK? You guys cool? But you can go right to this. You don't have to do minus and negative. If you want to look at this problem right here like this and say, who's sharing sides with y? Negative 7 is. How do I get rid of it by adding 7? Got to do the same to both sides. You're good to go. All right, we're going to pause for just a second. All right, guys, uh, we're trying to stay within a time parameter for you, so I'm going to go quickly, OK? So here are some examples from section 2.2, the multiplication principle. Now, we're not going to do any additional samples for 2.3, because you only have like seven problems to do in that. And I want you to wrestle with them a little bit. But I want to show you some of the weird stuff that comes up in this section, OK? The first thing I want to share with you is, who is sharing sides with x in this problem, OK? Negative is sharing sides with x. Negative is, yeah. X has to be all alone. If the goal of solving is to get X alone, it's, it's not to, you know, get it kind of alone. I mean, you got to get it all alone. So we got to get rid of that negative. So we got a negative on this side. And in essence, you could say it's being multiplied. It's like negative 1 times X. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So we can divide by negative 1. What we do to one side, we do to the other. Divide this by negative 1. These cancel. Negative and negative makes a positive. One and one makes one. This is just x. And then a negative over a negative makes a positive one. So x equals one. Think about the original problem. This is one of the few that I'm going to check with you. Okay? If we say negative x equals negative one, we put one in here. Indeed, we have negative one equals negative one. Check. It is true. Pretty simple. Okay? Same kind of a concept here. Let's have you guys do this at home real quick. Why don't you pause your video? Okay, for just a second, do that problem. Okay, we're back. If you didn't pause, I guess you're just going to listen to me tell you the answer. Okay, so who's sharing sides? Same concept here. Negative is, it's being multiplied. We're going to divide. Okay, so this becomes positive 47 equals t. Okay, because these cancel it out. So hopefully you got that right. All right, look at this problem right here. Negative t over 2 equals 7. Who is sharing sides with t? Both a negative 
and a 2, OK? Um, in, instead of having to do two things at once here, let's think about this. Let's use our common sense. 2 is being divided. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So we're going to multiply this side by 2 and this side by 2, right? Notice what we're multiplying. So we've got to put another parentheses or it'll look like we're subtracting it, okay? These twos cancel each other out. If I do this, am I going to have t alone? Am I going to have t alone, Kenny? No, I'm not. I'm still going to have a negative there. So why don't we tag a little negative onto that and a negative onto that? So got to do the same thing to both sides. I can't multiply this side by negative 2 and that side by positive 2. I've got to do the same exact thing to both sides. Okay. Well, what's going to happen is the 2's will cancel, but the negative and the negative will make a positive. Now t will be all alone. And 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. We're going to go ahead and check this one too. Okay. So the original problem is negative t over 2 equals 7. Think about it. If we put a negative 14 in there, we have negative negative 14, because there's always already a minus there. Over 2 equals 7. Negative and negative makes a positive. 14 over 2 indeed does make 7. 7 equals 7. Check. It's true. Okay. All right. I'm going to erase that just so we have enough space here. Okay. I'm um, going to do this problem with you right now. Okay. Same concept is this one over here. So I want you to pause for just a second, see if you can do this without me. Okay. Boop. Oh, we're back. I woke up. Okay. If you didn't pause, you cheated. I'm just kidding. Okay. Who's sharing sides with M? Negative N3. We're gonna, uh, it's being divided, so we're going to multiply. So we're going to multiply this side by 3, and we're going to multiply this side by 3. Um, but that would not get rid of the negative. Okay. So let's go ahead and do what? Yep. Do negative 3 to both sides. Uh, these cancel. The negatives cancel. M is now alone. And we have negative 3 fifths. I'll let you go in and check that answer. Good job, okay? All right, this one here, you got a problem or two like this in your assignment, and you got a fraction and a decimal together, and you're kind of like, what the fetch do I do here, all right? Who is sharing sides with y? Negative 9 sevenths. Folks, there's a couple of different ways we can do this problem, okay? Negative 9 sevenths is...